Starting your first sessions as a forest school leader can be a daunting prospect. In between risk assessments and uh, site permissions and writing your forest school handbook and designing and planning your first sessions, there's a lot to think about. And one of the things you're going to have to think about is equipment. Now, equipment can be a bit of a minefield. It seems like there's so much forest school stuff out there and a lot of people that I see on forums and such are a little confused as to what you actually need to start a forest school. So today we're going to dive into my top 10 essential items that if I was starting a forest school from the ground up with the benefit of all the years of experience, these are the items, these are the first 10 items I would buy for, for the forest school. So if you're interested in learning more, Keep watching, and I'll see you in a moment. So you, you don't actually need a lot of equipment to start a forest school. I mean, part of forest school is making use of the resources around you. There's a number of different things you can do, you can make. It's only really limited by your own and your, the children's creativity. So yes, I would encourage people starting out to try and make do with what they have, where they are, and do the best you can with, with the resources you have. Some of the best quality sessions I've ever had have been with very little equipment and focusing the energy and curiosity of the children. But there are a few items that I would definitely look at getting just because they offer the greatest variety of sessions and they extend learning the most. Now these are my personal items based on my experience. You might disagree and I'd love to hear about that. Now, I'm just going to switch tax immediately on that first bit there. You don't need a lot of equipment. There is one thing you absolutely do need. And I would say, out of all of the essentials, this is the essentialist. If you are running a session where you have responsibility for others, so whether the parents are there or not, first aid kit should be part of your equipment that you take anywhere. If you're, going a, if you're taking a group of people on a walk, if you lead a cycle ride, if you are inviting people over to a stall, this is the bare minimum you have to have. If you don't have a first aid kit, I would say you're not being a responsible professional. So number one, first aid kit. And I have a link to various videos that I've done about a lot of these items before. I'll link them up above and also in the description. Number one item, first thing to get, get a decent first aid kit. And the training to go with it goes without saying, if you're running forest schools, you should be first aid trained. And that will also inform a lot of what you put in your first aid kit. What you put in your first aid kit will be, um, will be set by your own personal level of um, training within first aid. The second item on my list is a shelter. Now this feeds in just like with the first aid kit. If you want to run sessions throughout the year, you are going to need somewhere that will keep people dry, or at least allow it to keep kit dry. So if, unless you want to spend a lot of time drying off kit all the time or canceling sessions, a shelter is really important. Now, when you're starting out, you don't necessarily need to get the big five by five um, tarp or the uh, massive parachute. If you have a large group, you might want to dive straight in with that and it's a good investment for a session. But I started out with just a three by three. It just gave us enough space to put a bit of kit under, somewhere we could huddle under if it was absolutely pouring down, or just somewhere dry 
just to have a small craft activity. So num second thing on my list and something that I consider really important I take to every session is a shelter. Now this is where we might start heading into some disagreements. I mean first aid kit and shelter are pretty much I reckon going to be universally acknowledged as important piece of kit. But this piece of kit is one of the most valuable ones I have for the type of sessions I run. I run sessions where I primarily have to set up in a public park so everything needs to be dragged in and set up. This makes a car, having a cart really useful. It, it saves so much strain on your back and your arms and really makes it easier to transport a lot of kit. At this quite a distance. You can also use it to move around stumps on and off site, pack up whole lots of equipment, throw kids in. It's a really useful piece of equipment. So if you ever have to travel with kit, I'd thoroughly recommend getting one of these carts. I've got this one, it doesn't fold down, but it's very sturdy. I've hauled like 30 kilo logs around on it, and it's coped just fine. Very really handy piece of kit. If you're going more off the beaten track and you're trying to condense everything down, you might be able to fit everything in a rucksack. But for this third item, it's some way to transport your kit to and from site. Like I said, if you're on a site where everything is set up and you get to keep all of your equipment on site, this may not be as necessary. But if you're moving stuff around, absolutely one of the best purchases I've ever made. My third item is a fire steel. These are a great way to teach fire lighting and fire. I think it's a very important part of forest school and something that really captures children's excitement. So for, for my third item, I'd say a good fire steel. When you're just starting out, you can just work one-to-one -one with children and you can just have one fire steel. Obviously, if you have a couple more, then you could actually do more. But just starting out, a fire steel. So these aren't as dangerous as matches or lighters and they involve the children quite tactilely. So these, the light my fire, fire steels are quite good. These ones are quite decent, but you can get every day Amazon style. So these type you'd find on Amazon or the um, bushcraft store fire lighters are also quite good. Fire steels also quite good. So get yourself a decent fire steel. It'll last a good long time and you'll get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. And the kids will get something I believe of value. Now for my fourth item, I'm kind of going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to say a fire pit is a good fourth item. If you can't, particularly if you can't have fires in the ground. So if you're working in public spaces or in a lot of forests, they won't allow you to have fires on the ground or permanent fire pit. If you're working on private land, there's a good chance you will be able to, in which case you won't need a fire pit. They're handy, they, they raise everything up, they contain all of the embers, making it easy to deal with after the session, and they are really handy to use. So fire pit, but then as coming along with a fire pit and thinking about safety equipment for using a fire, if you have a fire pit it's probably a good idea to have a pair of fire gloves as well. These are just flame retardant, retardant gourd gauntlets, just thick leather with a little bit of heat proof fabric in there. These aren't designed to protect you all the way from fire but they do offer a bit of protection for moving coals around or if you need to move the fire pit itself. And then in addition to that having a bucket or container of some sort if you don't have running water on your site if you need to deal with burns you go want somewhere that you can submerge the burn it's usually going to be on the hands. Submerge the burn or keep it under running water to then help cool the burn. 
So I'm just going to say for this item, it's going to be a fire set, fire kit. So fire bowl, gloves, bucket. For my sixth item to accompany the fire pit, I'd say you need a good kettle, either a Kelly kettle, so something that can you can light a fire in and manage outside of the fire, or a kettle that you can actually hang over the fire and keep on the fire. Hot water is a great morale booster for time for particularly during the autumn and winter months when it gets a little bit colder. Having water for hot, hot water for hot chocolate, to wash hands, to uh, to wash up dishes, whatever. It's a really good idea to have some way of creating hot water or carrying it with you. So an alternative to that would be a good flask or jug for carrying hot water. And you can, if, you can, if you can find one, they'll last you long enough, keep things warm enough, so you can fill it in the morning and then bring it to forest school and you have it throughout the day. That's pretty good. But I'd say either a good kettle or flask. Kettle would be preferred because you can always reheat more water. So that is a good kettle. Now once we've got a fire pit, we've got a kettle, we're going to need something to go with those, which is water. Now water is not always available on site and likely you'll want to carry it in. So having a good quality water carrier is really nice. So these Ridge Monkey water containers are pretty good. I've seen some others around as well. The good solid long lasting water container is my seventh item. Bring water on site for hand washing, for putting out fires, for boiling for tea and hot chocolate, so on. It's really valuable to have some water. So, seventh item, good quality water carrier. Now that we've taken care of our basic needs through, uh, we've got first aid kit in case of emergencies, we've got cart to move things around, we've got shelter to keep us dry, we've got a fire to keep us warm, kettles to boil water, so that we have water to drink. We've got our water carrier. And then for our eighth item, we start moving into tools. And I think for my eighth item would be a knife, a sheath knife, like this Mora. Mora Companion make some really good ones. They're quite cheap, cost effective. You do get ones with blunt tips and so on. I do talk a bit more about that in my video on knife skills the different types you can see just a good solid sheath knife this will allow you to do more with your toasties even if it's just you using it, it means you can whittle skewers cut string uh, so to make feather sticks all sorts of uses for a sheath knife so eighth item sheath knife now, after, after a knife, I think the next tool is got to be a saw, like this bow saw. These are really handy to have for cutting hazel poles, to use for supports for shelters, making elder beads, um, cutting firewood to length, making wood cookies, wood discs. The uses really are endless. Good quality saw. That is my ninth item. Then moving on, for my final item, I have an axe or a splitting tool of some sort. Because chances are, if you're buying in firewood, you're going to need to split it down into more manageable sizes, which is a great activity for children to engage in and having either an axe or a fro or an appropriate splitting tool I'd say 
is really good to have as an essential item for starting out. And if we combine it with our kind of triumvirate of tools, we have knife, axe and saw, we can build most things. So you can make mallets out of that. You can saw through the side, split down and then carve the corners off to make a mallet handle. It's really fine. We can make um, elder beads as I said, we can make um, spoons, probably not spoons without a crook knife, but things like spatulas, we can make all sorts of stuff. So we've got basic tools. Say if you're just starting out, one set is probably all you need. You probably don't have the confidence yet if you're just starting out to be able to work with a large group with tools. So just stick to one to one, one to two, and just start getting comfortable using these tools. That is honestly where I would go with tools and equipment. If I was starting out, say, horrors or horrors, van Gogh stolen, my kit storage burnt down, whatever, I'd probably start off with those 10 items. I've got a first aid kit, shelter, first aid, um, sorry, cart, yeah, fire steel, fire pit, kettle, water carrier, and then those three tools at the end. That will help you really get started. And as I say, the resources are out there. Make the best use of your space. Think about, okay, if I want to spend a kettle over the fire, rather than buying a tripod, let's see if we can make some out of hazel. We can cut down the hazel, we can tie with knots, we may well need some string. How can we make string? We could make some nettle string, we could, make some, we could twist some brambles up. We could start, use, start thinking, particularly if you want to engage the older children. Bringing in resources doesn't have as much appeal as creating them out of the space that you're in. So just think about how you can use the space. Those 10 essential items will really get you started. I will probably make another video pretty soon where I'll hit up all of the items I'd get after that because they are definitely some nice to have items, but these are the ones that I'd consider essential for starting out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. If there's anything else you would add to the list or take off the list, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Just leave them in the comments below. Until next time, make the most of every day.